Alright everybody, we're going to be making some agar today and uh, we're going to follow an extremely simple recipe. We're going to use agar. We're going to use a little light corn syrup. And we're going to use some potato flakes. This is a 3 to 1 ratio recipe and you can scale it up or down either which way. One of these jars requires six of them. Each one is a half a cup of water with three grams of potato flakes, two grams of agar powder, and one gram of corn syrup. Now you can scale that up or down either way. If you want to do it for one jar full to right up under the uh, line right here then what that is is that's 18 grams of potato flakes that's 12 grams of agar agar powder and that's six grams of corn syrup but we're going to use milliliters on the corn syrup side so it's actually going to be 20 i'm used to using a big one it's going to be a 36 uh milliliters of corn syrup for that jar all right so here we go with our scale we're going to turn her on and we're going to wait for it to zero out tear all that off hang on let's just do it like this let's turn her on now let's put this stuff on there Then we'll zero it out. Uh oh. There we go. Now we zeroed. Okay, we're gonna get us a spoon here. We're gonna do the potato flakes. So we're looking for 18 grams of potato flakes. One. Two, three. Look at that. You see that? 19.2. Now, on every one of these, it's okay to be a little over. Besides the corn syrup. The corn syrup is the one you don't want to be over. I mean, yeah, I guess it don't hurt, but that's the only one that can do damage. Uh anything over five percent sugar starts becoming uh troublesome for agar so i just figure why risk it you know what i'm saying i just figure why risk it if that's if i can if i can't give it too much potato and i can't give it too much agar but i can give it too much sugar then why risk it why not just stick with the recipe which is 36 milliliters But you do want to give it at least what the recipe says because we're looking for nutrition. That's the whole idea of this. All right, so there is our potato flakes in each jar. So we can go ahead and put that up. That way we don't have an accident. And you do this in order, you know. Do it from the three, the two, and the one. The big one, do the two powders first, which would be the potato flakes, then the agar. All right. Everybody following along how much agar we had 18 of the 18 of the uh, potato so on the agar we're gonna need 12 So you had ended up being a uh, 14 that'll work I like my agar to definitely be firm anyway. I like, I'd rather it be a little firm than any loose cause now that might be a little more than I wanna just because I don't wanna be wasteful. There we go, I'll take 13 and a half. Bam, 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 bam. 
Now I'm gonna tell y'all something that I messed up with from the start. I was uh, reading and 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 watching and all kind of crap like that, and I seen where people. I seen where people use color, uh, food color in their agar, especially green or blues or anything like that. People don't do that. Okay, don't do that. Don't do that to yourself first off. But it's st it's just it's 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 stupid, is what it is. There's absolutely no benefit in it. And why do you want to put something in your agar that's going to go in your jar that's a similar color to contamination now two weeks in you're sitting there looking at the green agar that's done turn a little funny and you're like is that contaminated is that contaminated you're panicking why not leave it this off-white color where that way when you see something green come up in your dang jar you know hey i didn't put that green in there so that green might don't belong you see what i'm saying don't put something don't don't do that to yourself i've messed up a whole dang batch because i got i just got i got plum damn sick of it i got plum sick of i had like three jars contam and i had like four other ones that didn't contam but hell i could i the uh the the i, I threw away a whole thing of food color the size of this uh i threw away a whole thing of blue food color the size of this corn syrup jar because i ordered it offline because i seen somebody else using it and i was thinking i was like wow i'm gonna go ahead and get me a big bottle of it that way uh you know that's a good idea blah 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 i didn't even think about why it's not a good idea you know like why it's not a good idea it just don't make no sense to put something in your jar that is a similar the same color as contamination and you might be like well trip why is blue i ain't never seen a blue contam well oh shit well by the time you uh by the time you water blue down just a little bit with all this stuff right here it sure comes a pretty close color to green i wish i would have kept some of them to save it and i mean if you're a veteran you can hold it up to the light and look at it and and figure it out you know or even just set the jar aside and ride it out you know and just see just but I, I say again why put yourself through all that agar the reason people color it is so they can see their mycelium in the my in the uh in the dish and see how well it's growing and all that well this is the thing when you got good mycelium going anyway you can see it you can see it you can see it it's going to be rhizomorphic growth it's going to stretch out it's going to have dang fingers hang on i'll go get one on a clear dish and show you that way you'll see what i mean it's just uh well first off it's it's unnecessary right It'd be different if, if it, if it benefited the mycelium in some way, right? Like, uh, let's say it, it gave your, uh, let's say it worked like antibiotics or something and it helped your mycelium out. And then there was, you could justify it. You could say, all right, well, I got to deal with the headache of trying to figure out if this is, uh, contamination or not but at least for doing it at least for doing it I'm getting something my mycelium is gonna be strong or my mycelium is gonna be better or or something no nothing hang on I'm gonna grab this up this dish for you to see uh, okay you got absolutely no problem seeing mycelium on a clear dish and you got to remember this is a cell phone camera so this is going to be as hard as possible for y'all to see it but you have no problem seeing mycelium none 
you don't need no dang food color in the agar to throw you off or even to have you wondering, to have you curious, to have your mind playing tricks on you. Uh, any of that. None of it. None of it. You don't need none of it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set them two aside. And now I'm going to fill this one up with water to the line. And then I'm going to throw it in the microwave for just a second. Why? All right, this is the beauty of dealing with, uh, remember I told you that there's got to be a good, there, you want there to be a good reason why you're helping the environment. I mean, you don't just want to be friendly to the environment. You want there to be, you know, you want there to be a, a, a good, a good reason why. Well, this is it right here. When you're dealing with plastic, sorry, I hate that mess and I got I got I, I, I spilled some of my agar in it. Gonna, I mean, it ain't gonna do nothing because I'm gonna put these in the pressure cooker later and it'll wash them off, but it just, it bugs me. All right, so anyway, uh, this is the beautiful thing about using glass dishes. If you are if you don't have a flow hood, now if you have a flow hood, go ahead, I guess, you know, do your thing, whatever. But if you don't have a flow hood, why wouldn't you wanna use glass petri dishes? Because then you don't gotta worry about contaminations because I'm gonna show you, we're gonna seal these up and I'm gonna pour them and it don't matter if something's in them right now or not, it don't matter because they hadn't even been in the pressure cooker yet. It goes right the opposite with these, the ones I'm gonna do in the plastic to show y'all how I do it just to prevent contam as best you can uh, to, to show you how to pour in the still air box and all that. But with this glass, you don't gotta worry about it. You pour your dishes up you put the tops on them, you let them cool off, and then we're going to tape them in a certain way, and we're going to put them in the pressure cooker, and then we're going to tape them again when they come out, and then they're clean till we use them. There ain't no way they ain't clean. Well, there's one way. If there's contams that can survive the pressure cooker, then they might don't be clean. But if the pressure cooker kills everything, then they're going to be clean when they come out. So if you don't have a flow hood, why wouldn't you want to invest 50 bucks and about 100 uh 50 bucks and a hundred of these that you can reuse over and over and over and it be sweet. You know, you don't ever got to worry about it then. You don't never got to worry about it. Watch this. Okay, we got a minute and a half left. Let me get my glove and then remember everybody, these gloves, man, they're going to save you if you uh, if you get you a pair. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, thirty-two, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, All right, perfect. We got more little ones. So anyway, these gloves right here, they will save you so much trouble. Of course, I could pour the agar without them. But it makes life so much easier to have it to pour, to pour it with. Why would I want to pour it without it? Why would I want to pour jars out of the pressure cooker without it? Why would you want to do a lot of stupid stuff we do when six, six dollars to get you a pair? We got 36 seconds, y'all. 36 seconds and we are cooking. We're be caught, locked, and ready to rock. And now, once again, I'm gonna show you all the trick with the painter's tape. When you get through, when I get through pouring, to do these, that is just—it's an amazing little trick. It is. It's a plus. That's all I know to say about it. It's a plus. It took me several tries to get this down where it would work, where I liked it. But for now that I have it down, I do like it. And I'm proud to share it with y'all. Proud to share it with you. Okay, here we go. So you take, you got your agar over here. It's gonna come out there sizzling, bubbling, acting crazy. It don't matter, because we remember, this is not the final cook. All we're wanting everything to be is mixed up so that we pour, get a good even pour. And even if it's close to how hot that is. Oh yeah, that's all you need. It don't gotta be burning, scalding hot. 
I am not going to drop my spoon in there because I might stir again in a second. So remember, when you're pouring this, you don't need much. The first one might be messy because you're trying to get some of that out of the way. Some, you know how it's hard to pour something full. All right, well that's what we were experiencing there. But now it's easy money. Now with the glass one, well, and also with the plastic ones, you want you want your uh you want it to cover the bottom of the dish well. But you do not want no big thick slabs. The reason is, is because you're going to be putting these in your jar. And you don't want to add a whole bunch of extra moisture to it. Uh, I was going to show you a pre-made plate, but it ain't necessary. I can just show you the thickness on these. And you can trust me or you can try it your own way. Or you can trust me and try it your own way. That's what I like to do. I like to listen to somebody who, who knows more than me. And listen to it and do it their way and listen to it and do it their I mean, do it their way do it their way till I've done it their way several times and I understand the process and then once I understand the process should I get out there sideways and try some stuff you know just just because all right so we got her going now and you see how thick that is? That's not very thick. But that's what you want. You don't need a whole ton of agar in these plates. All right, so we can pull our jars off now. Now what we're gonna do is stack these up a little bit over here where they're kinda out of the way. My tops, where each time that I get a uh, uh, dish I can stack it that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna stack these right now that way I can clean up behind myself okay see all that dirt on the outside none of that matters literally don't let it that might be a little thin And that one ended up being a little thick but it don't matter this is not a zack tart and it don't matter like you're you ain't gonna you ain't gonna mess nothing up if your dish is too thin you just don't want it to be so thin that it uh that it don't work you know you want it to cover the bottom completely long as it covers the bottom completely and you followed the recipe then uh, all will be well. The mycelium will love it. Okay. So now we got everybody topped off and in there. Let me uh let me take care of my little work area real quick. Why before that agar dries. Okay. 
Now that we get that. Here is the paper tape trick that you're going to love. This is a good trick for the, uh, for the pressure cooker, right? All right. So what you want to do is you want to try to imagine a strip that could go all the way around that. So about that long will work. You want to tear it and you're holding it at the bottom and then you're going to lay it down on the table and you're going to take one of these and you're going to center it perfect just like that okay now you get the rest of them that one and you okay now you do the same thing once again except now we can see that we need just a little bit of a shorter piece this one you just get to hold and you get to look at it, set it, and pay it out. Now, there's one ready. And we're going to rinse, wash, and repeat. Now on this one, remember, hold it with your thumb. Try to get the first set good, perfect. Now you can get the rest of the team, get them on there, okay, we're going to bring that one right up to it, lay it over, same thing, this is why, do yourself a favor, I promise you do yourself this favor. When you're supplying up, go to Lowe's and get yourself the contractor's pack of blue tape. It's kind of expensive. It's like $22, $23, and it seems like a crazy investment for tape. But trust me, for making labels for the jars, for this, for taping up your box, for making the... Uh, fruit and chamber like I showed you for there's endless 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 things you can use tape I mean this painters tape for endless things you can use it for doing mushrooms I mean it's next to the pressure cooker it's the best tool there is for a mycologist next to the pressure cooker it's the best tool there is and it's a little known tool. You don't, I don't see a lot of my colleagues using it. I don't see a lot of them using it. And I don't understand why, because it don't leave a residue on your equipment. It's just trust me. Matter of fact, don't even buy the, uh, don't even buy the, the contractor's roll. Just buy you one and then see what you think. See if you could live without it. Now look, now we got these beautiful rolls we can just set in the pressure cooker. And when they come out, you're going to do the same thing again. You're going to put another strip of tape up this and up this. That way, it's completely sealed off when it comes out. And then when you get ready to use, say, a strip of these, you can cut it out of its tape. And then as you use it, then you put your parafilm on it, on each single one. But if you didn't tape it like this, then when it comes out of the pressure cooker, you're going to have to parafilm each one. And then when you use it, you're going to have to re-parafilm it. That's wasting a lot of parafilm when this tape is so much cheaper. So much cheaper. 
All right, everybody, that's how you do glass agar. Thank you for your time. Last time y'all seen, we had just wrapped up the agar in the glass dishes, and then I made up two additional jars that I'm gonna pour and put in the, uh, that I'm gonna pour and put in the uh, plastic, the ketchup cups, just to show you both ways. It is on four PSI cooling down. I've already got the top off, so when it comes out, I can show you how to finish up the tape on the uh, the glass petri dishes. The reason we're gonna do it first is two reasons. One, it's the thing that's open to the air right now, kinda, so you wanna get that sealed up as quick as possible. And two, because we have to wait for the agar to get down around 140, 125 to 140 something like that that's about where you want to be working with the agar and the ketchup cups you can work at agar at hotter temperatures when you're dealing with glass and things like that but when you're dealing with agar and the thin plastic of them ketchup cups you want to be working with it right around 125 to 140. i like about 130 to 125 because it keeps the top from being quite as steamy but i'll show you a trick to uh fix the condensation on the lid also all right, we got just a few more minutes. And uh, it will be coming out. Let me grab my glove. Let me turn that off, my bad, y'all. Hey, if you listen to Upchurch coming down. Right, here we go, it's just about to click. Gotta get a little water ready to put in there because I got one more thing I gotta pressure cook, which is that big jar. I never have to do one jar at a time, but this is my last one. Do y'all wanna see a pile of grain? Check this out. You see all that? That is a pile of grain. That's how we do it around here. Oh, you could see it anyway. Hi, that angle wasn't blocking nothing. Okay, cool. I didn't realize you could even see that already. I didn't have to move you. But all, oh, you just heard that click. That's the click I was talking about a while ago that I said you'd be able to hear and you couldn't. But I heard that one. Okay, so the way we taped it up, it's gonna hold pretty good. So you just bring it straight out. Straight out. And straight on out. Now remember when we put it in, the agar was hard because we let it cool. But when we took it out, the agar is gonna be extremely liquidy. So just keep that in mind, but we still have to work with it right now because you see how this tape blocks up all these holes? Well, every fourth obviously is not blocked up yet. And plus this tape has been through the pressure cooker once. So that means it's still strong enough to hold the agar, but at the same time, it's pretty weak. So we want to do the same process we did before, except this away, and that will completely close off your agar. I mean, it ain't gonna, you know, 1000% it, but it's better than leaving it open. And this way you don't got to worry about it. And used to what I would do is I would go ahead and I would parafilm each jar right now, you know, but then I just realized that my whole motto is I don't like wasting plastic uh, because that's one of the hardest things for the earth to deal with on its own. So I just realized that I could use this uh, recyclable tape and do the same thing and actually it's a good bit cheaper than parafilm. Definitely easier to get. 
I ain't never seen a Lowe's on, on the planet that don't have painter's tape. And by the same mass, I've never seen a Lowe's that has parafilm. So, there you go. So you see what I mean? That is, I mean, like I said, I wouldn't call it 100% protected, but that's pretty protected, especially once you stick all the tape everywhere. That thing's hot, boys and girls. Uh, let me go ahead and get these other two done. Then I will pull the other agar we got over there out. And uh, I know that it ain't nowhere near cooled off, so I'm not in a hurry or nothing. Uh, but I actually, never mind. Uh, I've done this a time or two, so I know about how long it takes. It takes a good 30 minutes for it to cool down. I've seen people put it in the fridge and stuff like that, but I don't like to do nothing like that. I like I don't like to rush the warming up and I don't like to rush the cooling off. You know, like I've seen people that are get grain jars out of the pressure cooker and be trying to wait just right then that night or whatever to get it in there. Don't 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 be that guy. Don't be a don't be that guy. Just wait, be patient because the whole thing about growing mushrooms is patience anyway. So there ain't no need to not be patient on that part, you know? Or just, it ain't no need to rush it. And if there is a need to rush it, then take all the precautions you can and rush it. But if there ain't no need to and you're rushing it just because you're being antsy, then don't be antsy. There's, there's generally, if, if you're having to rush it eight times out of 10, what that means is that you, you planned bad. You planned bad because you should not be in no hurry. Now, I didn't say uh, 10 out of 10. You know, that's I don't need no comments about the time that it, blah, blah, whatever. Pretty much, though, if you're in a hurry, it's because you didn't plan something right. And there are circumstances, I get it. Anywho, we're on our last strip here. See, so now I don't even have to panic about these. You can label them and you can put them up. And that's another thing that I absolutely love about this painter's tape. It can be rode on with a ballpoint all the way to a Sharpie. I mean, this is some great tape for growing mushrooms. Check that out, boys and girls. Make sure the camera's still going. Don't you like to have a little supply like that? Them are 100% dried and ready to go. Okay, so here we go. Got us one jar right there. And then I did not have a other lid for a small jar, so there she be. And I made that lid. Another reason why I love the painter's tape. It can survive the pressure cooker. I forgot, let me throw this jar in there real quick. We got a little water there. Don't forget to loosen your lids on for the stuff you're putting in the pressure cooker or you're gonna open the pressure cooker up to a surprise. It's gonna be, uh, you're gonna have cooked grain. You're gonna have cooked grain all in the inside of your pressure cooker. And you're gonna have glass shards and uh, it's pretty much gonna be a mixture of glass and grain exploded in there. Or worse yet, you're going to open it and it ain't going to have busted yet. And when you pick the jar up, the moving the liquid around, watch this. The moving it around, well, that one's already got holes poked in it. But if that didn't have holes poked in it, the steam would push that tinfoil up. Now, if that's been going on inside there, boiling, 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 it's got a lot of pressure built. And say you ding the side of it or something and there was a crack, 
You don't want that exploding on you because the explosion ain't going to be that bad. You can deal with that. What's going to be bad is the literally scalding hot liquid that's coming out all over you. It's going to make you look like uh, 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 Frankenstein's monster. You're going to, you know, instead of, you're going to be made in a mushroom lab. Anyway, let me cut, change scenes, get to the still air box and all that, and I will see y'all back in just a second. Much love.